module two, we looked at a typical opening sequence, just four shots. If one or other player has got bisques, you might well do things very differently. Uh, because a bisque is not a get out of jail card. It's not something that you use just because you made a mistake. A bisque is here to help you win the game by building a break. And many players, unfortunately, waste their bisques by doing rather silly things and simply not thinking about the best possible move. And we're going to give you a, an example now and we'll assume for the moment that we've started as we did at uh, the end of module two. I won the toss and went first. So I've gone first and put my blue ball on the east boundary and here are brother George's five and a half bisques stuck in the ground. It's now his turn to play. So brother Ian put his blue ball on the uh, east boundary and at the end of module two I showed you a perfectly ordinary opening tice putting my ball, the red, on the west boundary. I have five and a half bisques now so I'm going to uh, play a, a shot which will signal to my brother that I'm thinking of using my bisques at an early stage. So I'm going to put my ball up close to the peg. So starting on the A balk. So here's my first ball, the red, quite close to the peg. And you may think, well, Ian could shoot at this with the black ball. Yes, he could. But what happens if he misses? The black ball will end up on B balk over there. So I could use it to take croquet from with my uh, yellow ball. So shooting at the red is not a good idea. So Brother George has played his red into the centre of the lawn, which is basically a signal that he's going to uh, want to use his bisques fairly early on. I now play with my black ball. At the end of module two, I put it on the east boundary, close to my blue. I don't want to do that this time, because if I leave two of my balls close together, that gives him really quite an, a relatively easy way of making a start in the game. So I'm going to make life difficult for him and I'm going to play my ball into corner two from the end of b balk. So here we are at the other end of the lawn. This is the north end of the lawn and here is corner three. So I'm going to play my black ball from the end of b balk, which as you may remember it comes up from that corner to the halfway line. So I'm playing into corner two. So my black ball went off in the corner and it comes back onto the corner spot just there. And now it's Brother George's turn to play again with the yellow ball. So now it's my turn to play again and I have various options. I could go for any of the three balls that are on the lawn. The, the blue on the east boundary, the red in the centre, the black over in corner two. The worst thing I could do would be to go for my own ball in the centre of the lawn. Because I put it there in order to create a rush opportunity down to hoop one. And even if I were to hit it, which is probably unlikely, what could I do? I could roll it down here, take a bisque, and I'd still have balls nowhere that are useful. So whenever you're taking a bisque, and I'm going to have to do that probably, look at the way that you can create a break opportunity. And if you've got a half bisque, as I have, use that first. Use it to set up the balls in a four ball break position and then take a full bisque and start the break itself. So I'm going to play my yellow ball and I'm going to go for the blue ball over there on the east boundary. And I want to be able to rush that ball 
up the court towards the north boundary, so I need it to be on the yard line. So I'm going to hit this hard enough so that it will actually go off the court. I don't want it to be three or four feet inbound of the, of, of the blue ball. So I'm placing my ball at the end of the A balk and I'm going to shoot to go off the lawn just south of the blue ball. So my yellow ball went off the lawn here and I missed the blue, so I'm going to take a half bisque. So I put my hand up to say to uh, Brother Ian that I'm taking a half bisque and also do this, which is a half. George's five and a half bisques are stuck in the ground uh, near where I'm going to be sitting. And when he puts his hand up and signals, I simply pull out one or other bisque so that we know how many he's got left and he can see how many he's got left. George has signaled that he wants to take half a bisque, so I pull out the half bisque and simply lay it on the ground there. So I'm now going to rush the blue up the lawn. He's pulling the grass out. If there are things like that, specks of grass or leaves that are distracting, get rid of them, pull them out. I rushed the blue ball up the lawn and I'm about, what, 10 yards or so from uh, hoop three. I'm actually going to do a thin takeoff here. Um, a thick takeoff would be better because that would put my ball closer to the hoop, but it's slightly risky because the black ball, which is the one I'm going for, is a long way away. Now, there's a basic rule in uh, association croquet. Always go for the most difficult ball first. I could, from here, just pop across and pick up the, the, the red and rush it down to hoop one. That would be a reasonable tactic. But I would still have that black ball in the corner of no use to me. So I'm going to go and pick it up and then try and get it out into the lawn. And if need be, I might have to take another bisque. But of course, I'm going to have to take another bisque at some point because I can't score any hoops with a half bisque. I'm just adjusting that slightly. So this is a thin takeoff and uh, my yellow ball is touching the blue as you can see and I'm going to croquet shot it across the lawn to pick up the black ball which you can probably just about see beside the red flag. Now in, in order to do that this ball must at least shake and I showed you uh, earlier on how to angle the mallet to make it do that. Now when you're lining the balls up there is a V shape here between the two balls. Look, look through that V shape in the direction and make sure that you can actually see the object ball, the target ball, in the V. And that will make sure that you actually do end up in the right place. You can, if you like, use your mallet and put it across the two balls like that, just to make sure that the yellow ball is not in front of the, of the blue ball. If the yellow ball is very slightly in front of the blue like that, the blue won't move and that would be a fault. So you need to make sure it's very slightly uh, behind or out of line. So this is a thin takeoff and I'm going to towards the black. So that was my croquet shot, a, a, a thin takeoff, and as you can see I've ended up about five feet from the black ball. So with my continuation shot, I'm now simply going to roquet the black and pick it up from there. So the black went off the lawn there, just this side of the peg. <coughs> I need to put it down and now I'm taking croquet again. 
I don't want to leave the black ball here. I need to get it out into the lawn so as I can use it. And the next ball I'm going to play is the red ball, which I put down near the peg. So I'm going to do a roll shot, in fact, a pass roll really, which will take my yellow ball uh, down towards the red. Then hopefully I can rush it towards hoop one. So I've croqueted both balls down here. My yellow ball is slightly shorter than I'd have liked. I'd really liked it there to give, my, give me a nice rush down to hoop one, but it's not too bad as it is. And remember, in order to score the hoop, I'm going to have to take a full bisque anyway. We're still operating on that half bisque. So I'm now going to rush the red, hopefully a little bit closer to hoop one. So I rushed my red ball down towards hoop one, pick up my yellow ball, ball in hand, and now take croquet off the red. So I'm going to do a split shot. Now I'm taking croquet off the red. This is, the yellow is my striker's ball. And I'm going to play a split shot. In other words, I want the red ball to come to this side of the hoop, and I want my yellow ball to go to the live side of the hoop. Now, when balls are touching, the ball in front, the croquet ball, will always go exactly in the line of center. So along the line of my mallet shaft, the red ball will come in that direction. It's a matter of judgment as to how to get the yellow ball to go where I want it to. I want my yellow ball to go in that direction. If you look on the Oxford Croquet website, you will find some er very erudite uh, physics and maths which shows you why this happens. But basically, we want the red ball to go in that direction. We want the yellow ball to go in that direction. So we hit the striker's ball at the midway angle, as it were, like that. So that will send this ball down here and that ball along there. And that is really just a matter of judgment and experience. It's halving the angle between here and there. Some people use um, objects on, on, uh, in the distance which are halfway between. Uh, personally, I just look at the balls and, and, and make a good guess. And uh, that's as good a way as any. It's not a particularly exact science, but once you've got the experience and the know-how, you'll find it works pretty well. So let's have a go. So I'm going to play a split roll, and you'll remember that uh, when we play a roll shot, you have to angle the mallet forwards something like 45 degrees, and I'm going to be uh, aiming more or less at the hoop with the mallet, splitting that angle. So that was my croquet shot. Remember, we're still on a half bisque. And what can I not do with a half bisque? Score a point. So I'm going to play my continuation stroke. And now I signal to my brother, I'm taking a full bisque. So this is really where my break proper begins. Now he's signaled that he wants to take a, a whole bisque so again, I pull out the bisque and put it on the ground. And so in this way, we can see how many are left and how many are gone. So I run the ball through the hoop. Pick up the clip. And then start to play the rest of the turn. And remember that in association croquet, a turn can last between 80 and 90 strokes. Take that yellow ball 
all the way around the course and uh, through hoop 12. You can't hit the peg with it just yet. Um, so it is a continuation, it's a sequence of one shot after another and all those strokes that we looked at you need to be competent and confident of playing so that you can play in any sequence anywhere on the lawn. The sequence we've just looked at was one where everything went reasonably well and then I took a bisque once we were in front of the hoop. Now let's look at something slightly different where things haven't gone quite so well. I've taken croquet off, I, I've, I've played all the balls on the lawn, blue balls over there, black balls here near the peg, I've just taken croquet off the red and ended up here. I'm nowhere near a hoop, but I still have some bisques up my sleeve. How can I best use them? Well, none of these balls is in an ideal position. So the way to carry on, I've got a continuation stroke left, forget going for the hoop right now, Let's go and tidy up the balls that we've got, put them to where we really want them, and then come back to the, to who, uh, to the red ball. So with my continuation stroke, I'm going to go across to blue and then take the bisque. I've now come across to the blue ball, which is in no man's land basically, it's halfway between hoop three and hoop four, neither use nor ornament, but I'm going to rush it up towards hoop three as my hoop three pioneer. So I'm taking a bisque. So I rushed my, my opponent's blue ball up towards hoop three. I'm going to take croquet with a thin takeoff and going down towards the black ball and then I'm going to rush the black ball up to hoop two as my hoop two pioneer. So I shall have pioneers at at least two hoops. So I've uh, croqueted the yellow across towards black here. I'm now going to play a little cut rush hitting the black on the left hand side to take it over towards hoop two. Yellow ball is ball in hand having I rushed black over here. I'm now going to do yet another thin takeoff and this time going down back to my red ball which is near hoop five. So here's my yellow um, and I'm going to cut rush again, just hitting red on the left hand side so that it goes across to hoop one. Taking croquet again, a little, a little drive or even a half roll this time, just putting my yellow ball nicely in front of the hoop. Just a little bit of forward slope on the mallet. And now the continuation shot and we snick it through the hoop. And now I've got a nice reception ball. and the break carries on from here as we did uh, in, in previous modules. So you see how taking a bisque and looking at the position of the balls and think, rethinking where they ought to be instead of where they are can put you in, in a very strong situation in a game. For, for what that one bisque, we've got a pioneer at hoop two, we've got a, a sort of pioneer at hoop three, could be better, but that's easily sorted. And we've got a pivot ball here, which we can put anywhere on the lawn. 
and uh, one of th what one might do from this situation is actually to go across to, to the blue ball, put it where we really want it uh, as, as a hoop three pioneer, then come back to the black which is a very easy hoop two shot and everything is then put in the right places for a good quality long four ball break. As I said in the last module, croquet is very easy if your balls are in the right places. It's very difficult if they're not. Earlier on in this module, I said that um, you should not regard bisques as get out of jail cards. What did I mean by that? Let me show you, or Brother George show you, some examples of what I meant. I'm at hoop two playing the red ball. I have a reasonable pioneer, which is the yellow, and so I need to try and make the hoop. Now, my opponent balls, I'm not sure if you can see them, there's a blue ball somewhere halfway between an, uh, hoop three and hoop four, and the black ball is way over in corner four. So let's see what happens. I'm just taking croquet. Up, oh. Oops a daisy. Fluff the hoop. What should I do now? Should I take a bisque? Well, those opponent balls are really a very long way away. My opponent is a reasonable shot, but he's not brilliant. And I think that I could take the risk of him shooting with one or the other. He'd probably shoot with blue to black because you don't want to end up with balls in the lawn. And his, if he shot with black at blue, his black would end up over here. So I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna take a bisque. Now let's replay the situation with the balls in a slightly different place. This time, the opponent's blue ball is still between hoops three and four, but his black ball is in corner three. I'm for hoop two with the red, and I'm going to play to put the yellow ball, hopefully, on the hoop three side of, uh, of hoop two. So here we go again. Oops, I've missed. Now, what I can do here, of course, is to take a bisque because I now have a reasonable break building chance if only I can run this hoop. So, I now take the bisque, putting my hand up, and I start again and play the yellow. And of course I've made it more difficult for myself because I'm now on the wrong side of the hoop. But there we go. In coming through the hoop, I actually rocked the yellow, so I have to take croquet off the yellow. And from here, I have various options. I could do a thin takeoff, go across to black, and then go to hoop three, leaving the yellow here, which is not such a good idea. Alternatively, I could croquet shot the yellow down to hoop four, and pick up the blue with my red, rush the blue back towards hoop three, which will give me a much easier shot to pick up the, the black ball, which is in corner three, and from there to the hoop. So that would be a reasonable way of starting to build a break. Here's another situation. This time, I'm taking croquet off an opponent ball, the black. My yellow ball is over in corner three, and the blue is down halfway down between three and four. And I'm playing as before. Oh. 
Oops. Now, do I take a bisque? Yes, because this is an opponent ball. And if I walk off the lawn now, it gives my opponent really quite an easy chance uh, to, to rush his ball to whichever hoop is on and pick up the other balls. So I must, must take a bisque in this situation. So I simply rotate the black again, having of course told my opponent that I'm taking a bisque, and then come back and play the hoop. So, there's always a balance of advantage or disadvantage in whether or not to take a bisque. You've got to weigh up. What is the advantage to you if you do take a bisque? Can you start to build a break from that position? Or would you give something away to your opponent if you did not take a bisque? And you've also got to weigh up the fact that if you're on the lawn and playing, your opponent is not playing. He can't score if you're on the lawn. But on the other hand, you should not be wasting your bisques in futile exercises, which may give you one hoop, which, but which are going to be very, very difficult to make progress from there onwards. So I hope you enjoyed that little explanation of how to use your bisques effectively. And you can take as many bisques as you like, one after the other, it's entirely up to you. But do remember the restriction on what you can do with a, uh, with a half bisque. And remember to take them early. If you're playing against a really good opponent, there is no point in hanging on to your bisques because he will have been round twice before you've got out of the starting blocks. Use your bisques early, put your opponent under pressure, and you'll have a good chance of winning. And most of all, don't waste them. Don't use them as get out of jail cards when you've made a simple mistake. Look, think, and then think about playing the bisque to get yourself into a better position than you would otherwise have been in. Now, in our next module, we're going to be looking at building the four ball break and, uh, and where we go from here. So I hope you'll join me for that next time. <laughs>